My name's Stuart Warboys and I'm a botanist with the Australian Tropical Herbarium. Welcome to the North Queensland Tropical Rainforest. For many people this is a uh, dark and mysterious place full of dark and mysterious plants and to a certain extent that's true. These rainforests are home to more than a thousand tree species. Here on James Cook University's Cairns campus, it's an 88 hectare campus and on this campus we have over 120 tree species growing in the wild. That's more than three times the number of tree species that are native to the British Isles. There's an immense diversity here and that diversity can be extremely intimidating, uh, especially for the starter. But we have a tool here that we, that, we, that we can use to unpick that diversity. For those of you who are interested in the, in the forests of uh, tropical North Queensland, the best tool to identify uh, uh, the species which occur in those forests are the, is the Australian Tropical Rainforest Plants Key. In this first of two videos, I'm going to introduce that the rainforest key, show you how it works, and in the second video we're actually going to uh, collect some plants and uh, we're going to um, show you how to identify them using the rainforest key. Developed over a 50 year period by CSIRO and the Australian Tropical Herbarium, the rainforest key, or more formally the Australian Tropical Rainforest Plants Edition 7, is a free interactive online key. It's one of the largest online keys in the world and is designed to help you identify nearly all the flowering plants occurring in the tropical rainforests of Northern Australia. The rainforest key has been created using Lucid, a system developed at the University of Queensland and now used all over the world for building interactive keys. Once you're familiar with the rainforest key, you can apply those skills to other Lucid keys. There are dozens available, all through the Lucid Central Portal. Two of the most important and useful are Eucalyptus of Australia and Acacias of Australia. So if you're interested, there are also keys to diseases of rice, invasive ants or common pond plants. But back to the rainforest key. Before I get to identification in the next video, I'm going to start by looking at the various resources available through the rainforest key homepage. So starting at the top, I skip study identification, uh, then we move on to species information. You can access information about the two and a half thousand species in the rainforest key by clicking here. So if you already know a plant species name but want to discover more about its appearance and natural history, this is the path you follow. For this video, I'm going to focus on one common lowland tree species, Terminale microcarpa. So let's start off by finding out this in the current name index. So we'll click on that, current name index. This takes us to the index of currently accepted names. Click on the T to take us down to Terminalia and then scroll down to find Terminalia microcarpa and click on that. That takes us to the species fact sheet for Terminalia microcarpa where you can read that the species is seasonally deciduous, has slightly hairy fruit, is found across northern Australia and is popular with frugivorous birds. There are also pictures that you can expand to have a look at the, uh, look at the plant in more detail. And uh, you can also look at the leaves. So if you know the name of the species, you can quickly navigate to the relevant fact sheet and check it out. Another way to approach the fact sheet is via the list of families. So let's do that. You can also uh, track down species via the family index, and that's assuming that you know what the family is. In this case, I already know that the family is Combritaceae. So I navigate down the fam alphabetical list until I find uh, uh, Combritaceae. Then, then click on Terminalia microcarpa again. Which takes us back to the fact sheet. That's just two different routes to the same species. But in some older documents, you will find Terminalia microcarpa by a different name, Terminalia sericocarpa. That name change reflects improvements to our scientific knowledge of the species. So historically, Terminalia sericocarpa was considered endemic to Australia with the related Terminalia microcarpa occurring in Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and the Philippines. In the early 2000s, it was recognized that the two species were actually exactly the same. So according to the rules of botanical naming, 
technically called the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, the Australian tree had to take on the older name held by the Southeast Asian tree. But if you're looking at old books or even older versions of the Rainforest Key, you won't know that. All you'll find is references to Terminalia sericocarpa, which is now considered a synonym of Terminalia microcarpa. If you can't find a name in the list of current names on the homepage, then it might be in the synonym index. So let's check that out. So from the homepage, uh, we click on the synonym in index right here. This will take you to the index to all names, including synonyms. Once again, we select T to scroll down to Terminalia, and we're looking for Terminalia sericocarpa. Here it is here. Terminalia sericocarpa. Uh, it tells you that Terminalia sericocarpa is a synonym of Terminalia microcarpa. And you'll see that the cor current correct name, Termin Terminalia microcarpa, is hyperlinked and that will take you to the fact sheet. Here we go again, back to the Terminalia microcarpa fact sheet. Now, there's one more thing to consider, common names. If you want to have a look at the uh, if you want to look up a common name, navigate back to the home page, then click on the common name index, like this. So common names can be a problem. This is because they're not precisely defined in the scientific literature, whereas scientific names are precisely described and a standard reference specimen, called the type specimen, is set aside. One unique scientific name applies to just one species. but if you're using common names, things can get really confusing. One single common name can apply to many different species. Let's have, uh, just have a look at the water gums. So if I scroll down to water gums here, you'll see there's a, around about 30 different species to which the name wa water gum applies. So calling a tree a water gum is essentially useless because it applies to so many different species. On the other hand, one species may have several common names. So Let's look up Bandicoot in this list. Bandicoot. Check here, the common name, uh, Bandicoot is a common name for our favorite tree, Terminale microcarpa. Now, let's look at Damson. You'll see that Damson is a common name for Terminalia microcarpa. And finally, you won't be surprised to find out that sovereign wood is a common name which applies to Terminalia microcarpa. It's called sovereign wood because of the um, golden color of the timber. Okay, so that's enough with plant names. Let's move on and have a look at some other useful features. So we're back at the home screen. We're gonna have a quick look at about. Uh, under the heading about, there are, several, there are a series of links. Uh, these tell you the history of the key and acknowledge the authors and other contributors. You should have a look at this in your own time. It's a real eye-opener to see how many people have contributed to this key over the half century of its development. Moving along. Let's finish up by going through the all important help resources. First and most important of these are the character help notes. Click on that. And that leads you to character help notes. The Rainforest Key uses more than 160 different characters, uh, also called features, to identify species. Here they're grouped in alphabetical order, all the bark characters followed by, all, by family, then flower characters and so on. You can access these help notes from within the program so if you're not familiar with a particular character, when you come across it in the key, you can look it up. For instance, let's have a look at um, uh, the character for leaf apex shade. So, leaf apex shape, listed in alphabetical order, is up here with the prefix of L that it indicates it a leaf character. And that will open up the character help notes for this feature. Most of the character help notes comprise a picture and some sort of, de, uh, some sort of short descriptive note. They're an incredibly useful resource. Whenever you're stuck on a character, make use of them. 
the help note also accompanied by a comprehensive glossary and we'll check that out next. From the home screen, we click on the glossary, which contains a comprehensive dictionary of botanical terms. Botany is like any technical discipline. It's full of jargon, which can be a challenge to the beginner. Uh, this glossary is designed to overcome that challenge and defines over 600 terms used in the rainforest key. So you'll encounter a lot of these terms in, in other botanical resources. Uh, so this I'd recommend using as your botanical dictionary. There are many other online botanical resources but two I'd recommend for starters are located in Wikipedia. Go to the Wikipedia homepage and search for either botanical terms or leaf morphology. And now we return to the home screen. This leads us to the next item in the list of resources, how to use the key. We'll be covering this in the next video, so we'll skip this one and ha have a quick look at uh, uh, the last uh, item, feedback. So, from the home screen, click on feedback. The feedback screen provides an important opportunity for users to contribute to the Rainforest Key. In a database as large as the one that underlies the RFK, some errors or oversights are bound to occur. For example, Sometimes populations of a species have a character that wasn't seen when the species was coded. The flower colour of Leptospermum wurinurin is sometimes pink, for instance, but no one has actually collected this colour form. So uh, the rainforest key only records the colour flower colour as white. If you used the key and recorded the flower colour as pink, it wouldn't be possible to identify the tree. Another ex example is Placospermum coriaceum. The error in this lies not in the key, but in the fact sheet text. The distribution and ecology notes for this species record its altitudinal range from near sea level to 1200 meters. However, the specimen was recently collected from 1560 meters altitude on Mount Bellin and Kerr, probably warranting an update altitude range. Then of course, there are inevitable minor errors, such as typos and misspellings. The editors of the key welcome any suggestions for further improvements to the key, especially if they're supported by voucher specimens. Use this form to provide that feedback and send that on. And we'll wind up here. In the next video, we'll step into the North Queensland Tropical Rainforest and collect some plants, then show you how to identify them using the rainforest key.